Welcome to this how to create bracket transfer media training video. My name is Henrik and I'm joined today by, by my colleague Tim. Hello Tim. Hey. So Tim, what is bracket transfer media exactly? Well, um, when we look at the bracket treatments, in the old days you would uh, see the brackets uh, one after one directly in the patient's mouth. Uh, but that's very uh, time consuming and also not accurate enough. So when we talk about indirect bonding, uh, we need a way to, to transfer the bracket positions uh, that are set digitally in the software. Yep. Uh, so it actually ends up in the right position in the patient's mouth. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> it also means that you'll be uh, able to maybe delegate this to some of your assistants, depending on, on which country you're in. There are, there are different uh, legislations on that, depending on, on, on the country you're in. Uh, but that could be a possibility in yep. some countries. Uh, it offers a very high range of uh, flexibility so if we look at what we call markers, I'll get back to that, but that's a, a way where you uh, can find a way to represent where the real bracket should be placed later on, on a model you thermoform on top of. Uh, okay, yeah. but you will show that later. Definitely, yep. yeah. But there you have a very high uh, flexibility when it comes to which printers can support it. We have uh, another method um, uh, where you can uh, disable the need for silicon drops, also that will be uh, evident once I, I, I demo it. And finally, we have a way where you can circumvent the entire printing of models and uh, no uh, wear compressing, of course, of these uh, models okay. not being involved. All right. So can you take us quickly through what we'll learn in this video? Sure. Uh, we will learn to make these traditional uh, models that you use as a basis for your uh, wear compressing. Uh, and also we will uh, learn how to make a directly printed transfer tray that would circumvent uh, these uh, previously mentioned uh, elements. And then we will also look at what possibilities we have to adjust the designs to meet the requirements from various uh, machinery and materials. So depending on what printer you have and what materials you put on it, then our software can support that. Okay. And then also finally to be able to get your uh, designs out in a format that you can actually put into a machine. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Tim. Okay, let's have a look at how it works. Okay, so we are now in Appliance Designer, and for those of you that have watched the first video on bracket placement, um, you will know you notice that that was in Ortho Analyzer. So uh, once that case was validated, then the actual bracket transfer happens in Appliance Designer. So Tim, why don't you show us how how it works? Sure. Uh, this is then, as Henrik mentioned, a, a validated uh, case. Uh, if it wasn't validated, then we won't even be able to see the brackets uh, inside a uh, okay, design. Right. So what we'll do now is that we will right click on it and then we will go down and choose to make a new appliance. We could change the naming here, but other than that, we'll just go on and, and press create here. Now we can actually see here in the lower left corner that it's loading the, the brackets and if it wasn't validated, then that wouldn't happen. Yep. Uh, then it will ask us if we will load the occlusion from Auto Analyzer, and we will do that. It could have been that there were collisions. In fact, we can see this is the uh, case where some of the uh, brackets on the mandibular is uh, colliding with the maxillary, and maybe we've saved another occlusion to circumvent that, ah. and now we could load that uh, occlusion. Okay, I saw that quickly there. Yeah, okay. it, it opened a little, nice. so there's nice. no uh, intersection. It will be up for the doctor to decide, but the software supports this. Uh, so now we need to, to make some, some transfer media. And we will start with the, the basic uh, stuff as is used today in, in indirect bonding. And that is where we uh, generate a model uh, where you vacuum compress on, on top of it. And okay, so, so you just right click basically here and choose master model. Yeah. yeah, so if we start with the upper, then right click and choose indirect bonding master model. And we will press OK. We could change the colors and all the usual settings that the users are used to from, from appliance design. Right. So let's start with the most uh, simple one. And this is what we call markers. And the idea is here that we will print the model as seen here, but without the brackets. And instead there will be these tiny walls where the real bracket should be placed before we do the vacuum pressing. We will then still, of course, need to protect the hooks and wings uh, like you, you usually do in, in the real life workflow uh, once this had been, been printed there. So uh, I'll start the generation of these while we talk about the parameters that we have that can help us with the uh, uh, production equipment and, and materials. Yep. The first parameter is called inner surface offset. And what that does is that it uh, on purpose either make uh, the, the footprint 
of of the bracket too big or too small. So if we have some uh, some frictions issues or, or other things, uh, then we could uh, circumvent them by by making ah, this okay. inner wall too big and too yep. small. So in in essence, it's uh, how yeah, too big or too small, depending if you make this as a plus or a minus uh, value. Yep, you can it. see it's in fact done already computing this, and this is fully uh, automatic, uh, dep- depending on, on what bracket library you have uh, chosen. The next one, uh, the next two one with the wall width and height, that is yeah. the width and You can and almost height. guess what that does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a quick word on, on what they are used for, and especially the, the height could be useful, because if we have a bracket with a very low profile, where maybe the wings are, are very close to the tube surface, then maybe we will need ah. to reduce the height of, of the, uh, the gotcha. walls here uh, to mm-hmm. make sure that they don't collide. Yeah. And you can set them uh, parametrically uh, down here. But other than that, as you can see now, uh, that one is uh, ready to export. And then we could print this, uh, put the brackets in, protect the wings and hooks by silicone, and then a uh, vac compressor thermoform on, t- on top of that. Okay. So that's sort of the uh, the, the, the basic one. Yeah. So uh, let's let's look at some of the more fun uh, advanced <laughs> one. Okay. So the next one uh, of the transfer methods uh, we will look into now here today, uh, that is what we call containers. That is also something that you can thermoform on top of. So we will make this indirect bonding master model as before. But instead, we will choose uh, containers, uh, the container option. So we will uh, have it start doing its uh, processing while I uh, explain what the various uh, um, options uh, these uh, parameters are for. Yep. The first one is called inner surface offset as in markers, and it's essentially the same thing. On purpose, you can make these uh, uh, containers, as we call them, either too big or too small. A container is a bracket representation but with one uh, noticeable difference, and that is that all the undercuts are removed. And by undercuts, I mean uh, in relation to the insert direction of the bracket into the vacuum form, the transfer tray. Okay. So if we look at at this bracket, uh, then you know the cavities here under the, the wings, material will fill that out, and the same with the hook, that would be sorted, supported by material uh, underneath. Okay. This inner surface offset will make it either too big or, or, or too small. Now it's actually done with the calculation, so maybe it's a bit more evident what I meant by me. Ah, uh, now I see exactly uh, what you meant. Yeah, yeah. The next one is called blockout angle, and what it does is that the, it makes the walls tapered of these uh, of this material that has been added. So if we increase the angle here of the blockout angle, then it will sort of angle out, and that is to accommodate friction uh, questions. Right. So if the material is very hard or just have a high inherent uh, friction, then we can either make the walls tapered or make this entire container a, a bit smaller. Mm. Retention amount is uh, actually a pretty cool feature. Uh, if you remember how the original uh, hook looked, then yep. of course well, there was a ball and a small mm-hmm. uh, pin going in here. Mm-hmm. If we add a retention amount, then it will reintroduce a little of the cavity that has now been filled out by this material. Right. And why um, would you want to do that? Um, when you then uh, vacuum compress your uh, tray on top of this, and you have a little retention, then you will get this clicking effect when ah, you click in the bracket yeah. into okay. the, the finished transfer Sort of like a tactile uh, feel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so you get a sensation, yeah. and then now it's, it's fully seated, because you know if you don't get the click, then it's not <laughs> seated all the way yeah. to, to yep. the bottom. Yeah, makes so, sense. So that uh, makes it very secure for both the lab and, and cleaning to know that it's seated properly. The last parameter is called uh, prolongation length. And what that does is that it takes care of any cavities that are under the bracket base and the tube surface. Sometimes the, the bracket will rest on only three or four points on the tube surface and there might be a little hole underneath. And this prolongation length will sort of extend the bracket base into the tube mm-hmm. according to this parameter. So if we have a, a, a patient with some very uh, thinly worn incisors, then maybe we need to reduce this to 0.5 millimeters okay. or another value. Yep. Uh, uh, but this default value, we haven't found a case yet where it doesn't catch it, but it's up for the users to know yep. that uh, they can change it if they find the need. So that is sort of how you would make uh, this uh, model here with containers. Okay. And the really nice part of this is that now you don't have to uh, waste time to protect the hooks and wings with silicone yep. drops. 
your thermal form on top of this and then it's ready to insert the brackets right yeah, away and yeah. then seat them in the mouth. Yeah. Plus the two workshop you just showed are really, really easy to use and understand. Exactly. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, final uh, transfer option we have is uh, directly printed uh, trays. It would be really cool if you didn't have to, first of all, print this entire model. It's, you use a lot, of, a lot of material and time on that. And then you had to vacuum press a tray on top of this and then spend the time to, to cut it out afterwards. It would be really cool if we could uh, print the transfer trays directly. And we have made a design option, so this is in fact uh, po uh, possible. And the only thing we need is a short-term biocompatible uh, material to, to print the transfer tray in. Yeah. There are materials uh, on the way and they should be on the market within a few months. So when you hear this video, there's a good chance that the, the materials are, are already there. So contact your free shape reseller and, and have mm -hmm. them uh, inquire at free shape for, yeah. for the latest updates. So, so that's this. quite a game changer for indirect bonding. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. People seem really excited about that mm -hmm. with the people that we have shown this so far. Yep. But let's try to, to make this directly printed transfer tray. So we still need this, but this is only for a basis to design the, the transfer tray on top of. So we will choose this, right click, and then choose create shell. And uh, now we will then uh, choose the insert direction. And that is not the insert direction for the individual brackets. That's the insert direction for the overall transfer tray. Right. And this looks fine, but we yep. could adjust it if we wanted to. Yep. Set a different camera angle, press set uh, insert direction, and then the uh, insert direction will be adjusted to the, the camera right. view. But we will accept this one. Yep. So, with the uh, insert direction uh, properly set, now we need to, uh, to trace where we want the transfer tray to, to go. Right. And uh, we would like the transfer tray to grip around as much as possible of the brackets, but at the same time allow it to escape once we remove the transfer tray from the patient's yeah, mouth. Yeah, because it obviously needs to come off. Exactly. Yeah. So, if we op have an open space here towards the gingiva edge of the transfer tray, then uh, the bracket will be able to, to escape once we pull out the transfer tray in the direction of the insert direction here. So, I suggest we try uh, tracing okay. it along the bracket edge here. Yeah. So that would be the lower edge of the transfer tray. Yep. I won't do the entire no, just uh, do tray. Th three or four. Exactly. Or, yeah. You you'll get the idea. Yeah. So so now we will otherwise we've done it all the way around, but now we will just go in and, and make the the other edge of, of the transfer tray here. This would be a fairly soft material. In fact, we've seen prototypes already, and it's uh, sort of a, a hard rubber property, so it seems ideal for this. Okay. So we could even make it, make it grip around some undercuts here on oh, the back right. side, yep. and it will yep. still be able to, okay. to, to let go. Yep. So we will go around here, and then we will close the spine here. Yep. Now we could correct any uh, mistakes, maybe move them around a little. If you made big mistakes, we could choose to do a, a fast edit uh, session and then just sort of draw like with a pencil and then it will adjust them. Yeah. But uh, let's, uh, let's try to see what we have uh, so far. So now it's, uh, it's done with the uh, commutations ah, here and I see. Yep. it looks, uh, looks good. Yep. As you can see, it looks like uh, the brackets would come be off. Able. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's still hugging the, uh, the brackets one to, to one. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we, we could have adjusted here with this one is to make it of uh, various thickness. Uh, we have the possibilities to decide how thick they should be. Okay. The default setting is one millimeter, but we could have made it thicker if uh, we felt that was appropriate mm -hmm. for uh, for the material. Mm. Uh, if it is rubber, then you need some some thickness for it. So maybe a millimeter and a half or two millimeters. Yeah. But again, yes. it depends on the material, yeah. and in our software, you have the possibility to to adjust it. Yeah. If this material was a little bit too stiff, then maybe we would like to make it uh, a bit more flexible, and we mm. have the possibility to do that. So if we choose, we click first on the, on the shell here, and then we press modify model. Then we have a tool where we can make uh, thinner areas on the shell, so hopefully it will be able to flex around these uh, edges. So you uh, choose this reduce thickness uh, yep. tool, and then you simply just click along the line where you want it to be, uh, be thinner. So maybe along the uh, incisal edge here, once you have clicked on the last point, then you double click on it, and then it will visualize yep. uh, so this. It uh, creates a tube of sorts. Yeah, yep. and that would be subtracted. Hmm. Uh, sometimes 
it, if you don't uh, put enough control points, then it will tunnel inside the model. Then you will just grab one of these control points and ah. make sure that it goes uh, outside the, the, the yep. model again here. Yes. Once you are certain that it's outside mm -hmm. here, then you just press play, and now it will subtract this tube from, from the model. You can define the radius here. Yeah. Ah, clever. So now it can, of course, bend more easily around that. Yeah, that's, ah. of course, the idea, but that will be mm -hmm. material dependent, but mm -hmm. we just have made the tool available for you so, so you can use it. Maybe we wanted to make one here, but, but you get the uh, yep. idea. Yep. If we had, in fact, made this uh, transfer tray along the entire arch, then probably we would want to, to seed it in sections. Maybe we want to see this section in one go, and this in one go, and this in yeah, one so go. Yeah, so make jigs, basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So uh, we could cut it up, and I'll uh, demonstrate this function that does this. So we have this uh, cut model function, and what it does is that you can uh, simply draw where you want to cut it. You don't even have to let go, you can simply just uh, drag it around like this. <laughs> okay. So now we could have cut it up in the relevant places, yeah. press uh, play, and then it will uh, start uh, cutting it up in the sections we have chosen. It's also possible to choose uh, straight lines, and you can also define how thick the, the knife should be, so to, to speak. Yeah. It's already done now, so we'll press done, and then we will turn off the original design element, and now we can turn these off ah. uh, individually and they are ready for seeding. Very clever. If we turn on the grid here, you can see that this is ready for a printer out of the box. I mean, it's a good, mm. nice mesh as, as usual, so you should be able to produce this uh, right away. Impressive. Yeah. So this sort of concludes the, the transfer methods, uh, and we feel especially the last one here would, would really be something that our users uh, would like. Yeah. Okay, thank you for taking us through this, Tim. Um, this concludes this uh, training video. Make sure to check out the other videos in the series and thank you for watching.